up guys, Metal Shop TV here. Tonight we are in a beautiful hotel room in Prague and we are having our special tea interview. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. With Eugene from Ginger. Hi. So, how are you doing? Fine. Really good. We've just came here from Bulgaria, played there two days ago and we in fact, we spent two days on the road. Uh, we had a sleep yesterday in Brno and came tomorrow, uh, to to today morning here in Prague. Yeah. yeah, but everything is going really well. So this is your, I guess, this is your like a fifth show of the tour. So is there anything like a special that happened during those first four shows? Absolutely. Uh, uh, these first four shows were Definitely very, very good. Probably the best we've ever had. Uh, we had two sold outs, really a lot of people coming to our concerts. Very good atmosphere. Moreover, we are using now, you know, a bit different uh, technique on stage. We have our own mixing console. Tatiana now has her own in-ear uh, monitors uh, and it works well for us, works well for the performance on stage. And uh, this time on this tour, we have a different uh, set list. Uh, for the first time, we play Bad Water Song. Mm -hmm. We only once performed it before, only once. It was in Kyiv. We had a DVD shooting and we played it only once before. And now we play it every show. And we, we feel so, so great playing it now live. Um, so everything is going, as I say, very well. Yeah. Well, uh, you are playing in Czech Republic quite a lot. So what do you like about Czech Republic the most? The public? Yeah. People, yes. The people, because, uh, I mean, it's common for all Eastern European countries. The crowds are really crazy here, very supportive. And you can always see mosh pits and slamming. So, and it's cool because it's cre it creates a certain at atmosphere. Yeah. I like it a lot. Well, and also it's always great to come to a country which is like Slavonic country, which is similar to ours. Well, we understand most of the written words and signs everywhere. So we feel quite okay here. It's very hospitable, hospitable, I would say. Okay. so. Let's talk about your latest album for a while. Uh, the song that resonates uh, with me the most is uh, I Speak Astronomy, because I feel like it's a, it's a bit different than the rest of the album. It's, it's like, it's got a six and a half minutes and it was picked as a lead single. So that's a bit unusual for a lead single to have a, like six, six and a half minutes. So what, why did you decide to pick this song? And did you did you know immediately that it's going to be the lead single that you are working on something like a special yeah we knew that it would be the lead singer uh, in fact after we um, stopped finished the recording session uh, after we recorded vocals final vocals for this song we understood that this is the strongest song on the album but uh, at the same time, I cannot say that uh, it uh, is very different from all the songs on the album, because uh, our, despite the fact that the album is very, very diverse, despite this fact, there are several sets of songs. We have uh, a couple of really heavy, I, I would say even pure death metal songs, like yeah, Sister All Over, for example, or Under the Dome, which doesn't have any clean vocals and it ha has a lot of blast beats. Yes, and we have yeah, the, co the chorus in that song is like pure death metal. Pure death metal, actually, yeah. yeah. And uh, we have very progressive songs, uh, which are A Speak Astronomy and Pisces, for example. I think that this is the pure connection between A Speak Astronomy and, and Pisces. Yeah, and we have songs which are more of a core, like just another th song, yeah? Oh, Words of Wisdom, hardcore song uh, uh, and so they are somehow combined into groups yeah uh, and I you know I'm not a person who 
really pays attention at how long a song is. You say six minute, minutes and a half. I'm a big fan of Opeth. They have songs of 10 minutes. Yeah. And yeah, well, so I'm also a fan. It's just interesting that you pick as a single the longest track on record. It just happens so. Yeah. It just I happens know. so, yeah. Uh, but we are really happy that we chose that there is song. It, I think it, um, it is the best song on the album, the best track which resembles the whole amb album which stands in front and it can be like if a person listens to it uh, he or she may understand that uh, what the, the rest of the album would be yeah yeah that's that's, that's, that's the thing yeah. well this record uh, if I'm correct was your first one uh, with uh, Napalm Records absolutely so how did the dynamics of the band change with this huge step to the one of the biggest metal labels in the world. Uh, dramatically, it changed dramatically because uh, as soon as we signed, uh, we could feel the changes. Not even see, but feel. We uh, got twice or even three times more interviews, attention from media. Uh, we had more people coming to our shows everywhere. And uh, when the album was about to be released and after it was released uh, we had so many reviews and uh, before that we for example we never had a review from metal hammer yeah. and this uh, now w with this record we have a review very positive re review from metal hammer of germany the uk and they even write articles about us giving us a page or two pages in, in a magazine and it, it's just awesome and i have to admit that it's i think mostly due to the work of label which uh, made all those media see us yeah, it's a cool thing that they can like push you to yeah yeah definitely uh, i uh, i have to say that before we got signed uh we felt a bit confused about our future it was the end of 2015 and we couldn't really understand what to do next we had our guitarist and the original member founder who left us yes and we had all those changes in the band and we i personally and the rest of the band we understood that we couldn't be anymore a diy band uh, we, we just it was a dead end for us that we we just couldn't grow anymore and we had Sits Roll Over video, which was very popular. And two weeks after we got the connection, we got a contract, an offer from Napalm Records. And definitely it brought us to a new level. Yeah. So it's been like uh, half a year or maybe more than half a year since uh, the record was released. So a bit more than half a year. A bit more. So maybe it's right now it's a good time to like reflect on it. So, do you feel like you've achieved or you've done with this record everything you wanted to do? Or do you already know that maybe with the next album you'll do something that you haven't been able to do with this record? It should be always like that. Each next record should be something different. You, you should bring something new into your music. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't make sense writing new albums and new songs. Definitely with a new album, we will make something new, which we haven't done before, 100%. But at this very moment, we are absolutely sure that King of Everything is the top of our career. And uh, we, we knew it when we finished the recording. We knew that we managed to do the best we could. And it's cool. It's really cool. Uh, I'm, we, all of us, we are really happy and 100% satisfied with what we did on this record, on this album. Well, uh, I read online that it was uh, like a really hard album to make because of some things like maybe inside of the band. Like, so was it because of lack of time or because some tension in a band or why was it? Uh, both reasons, uh, inner and outside. Uh, yeah, you're right, we had very, very short deadlines. Why we had them? Not because the label pushed us hard, no. 
because music and the band is uh, our only job and the only thing we do and this is the way how we make our living and we have to go on tours to just have w something to eat <laughs> namely yeah and we we just had to make a new album by uh, the spring of 2016 to be able to go on a tour uh, and uh, we realized that we actually we had only three four months in total to, to make it and we spent the whole the whole winter 2015-2016 in our house in Lvov in Ukraine uh, composing every day it was like uh, everyday job we woke up we took our guitars and we were sitting, playing, composing, bringing ideas, then uh, jamming together. And well, uh, of course, such such a schedule and uh, such a tension makes tensions inside between people. Uh, we didn't really have much time to you know to work out some things, and it, it was quite nervous. Uh, moreover, as I told you, that was the first record we, which we recorded and composed in four. Before that we had two guitarists and this one was composed in four. And uh, it was something new for us because uh, Dmitry Oxin, the ex-guitarist, he, he actually composed qu quite a lot for the band. And now we didn't have him. And uh, I, for example, had to take part of his responsibility I composed quite a lot of things for this album and uh, so we, we had to find some you know new way to cooperate inside the band and at first it was a bit tense definitely definitely uh, but you know eventually yes I absolutely agree it, it was uh, I uh, to make a conclusion I, I have to say that it, on one hand it was hard on the other hand it was really really great time because we were 100 percent into music mm -hmm. we expressed ourselves completely on this album this music is all what we had inside before cheers cheers yeah okay so let's continue well recently i was speaking to some of the Mus musicians from let's say like uh, non-metal countries like septic flesh from greece or lacuna coil from italy and they agreed on a interesting like a paradox that um, they are more popular outside of their native country than they are in their native country but i guess with you it's a bit different i guess you are a huge name in ukraine no 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 it's the same for us too yeah the thing is that uh, but i saw that you won like a uh, metal awards and yes the, we have this metal award the, the problem is that our scene isn't so much developed as for example here in czech republic we don't have so many fans there are only uh five six places in ukraine where you can play i mean around the whole country and we have a huge country and there are only five six uh, cities where you can bring really a big crowd what i mean big 200 300 people and only in uh, kiev you may have up to 1000 yeah. so yeah, uh, making a single show, not a festival. And uh, our our scene isn't, you know, it's very teenage. We have only teenagers coming to concerts. And it makes some certain, you know, peculiarities, <laughs> national peculiarities. It's very different from European, very different. Yeah. And we are, I think we are more popular outside Ukraine than inside. So, we are talking about it a lot and we spoke about it before the interview. Uh, I feel like your music has got uh, so many different influences. You know, sometimes it's like a metalcore, sometimes it's gent, sometimes it's thrash, sometimes it's proggy. So, I would like to know something about your personal influences. What comes to, to, to your musical ideas and how do you reflect them to your music? Mm, as I said, my most favorite band of all times opus but not only opus i started uh, with uh, american death metal scene uh, progressive death metal like the early 90s uh, atheist death uh, cynic 
And uh, apart from it, I listened a lot to doom metal, European doom metal. Uh, then thrash metal from America again. Uh, prog, prog metal, mm, all, all subgenres of prog, ma prog metal, even a bit of dream theater. Yeah. But now I, I don't, don't really listen to them. Yes, uh, then uh, somehow with me it happened in an uh, opposite way. I started listening to modern metal and new metal really late. Mm. Yes, uh, but it, it happened, I think, the, the first band I really loved was Mad Vein. Yeah, it's yeah. A cool band. Yeah, and uh, I forgotten uh, band. Yeah, and I I am really inspired uh, with the bassist Ryan Martini. He is one of my biggest inspirations as a bassist. I really took a lot. And it's an interesting thing because I I saw that. Okay. Well, it's quite obvious. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, through progressive metal and progressive rock, I started listening to non-metal genres, yeah. uh, like jazz and funk. Uh, well, which also, it is, I think, resembles in the music with the, because we have some jazzy and funky style, uh, style things. Uh, I eventually came to such huge bassists as uh, Victor Wooten and Marcus Miller. Uh, and I think every bass player in metal should learn from them because you can use this stuff in your music, actually, and it makes uh, your music your metal very diverse after it so i can enumerate i think endlessly yeah. <laughs> there, there are a lot of inspirations really a lot of that's cool well you spoke about american bands a little bit right now so ginger and america because i feel like you are quite established name right now in europe do you feel like it's time to take this overseas with a huge label behind your back uh yeah uh, that's what we are cra craving for at the moment. The problem is that we come from a third world country, yeah. to be honest, and we are potential immigrants. That's why they do not let us in. Yeah, uh, it is extremely difficult for us to make uh, artist American visa, the USA visa, very difficult. Yes, and uh, this is the main obstacle at the moment to get there. In fact, we were supposed to play at a festival in the United States in, in the United States last February, just yeah. one month ago, a big festival, and we couldn't because we were confirmed for the festival two months and a half before, and it's too short to make a visa. So it's all the legal stuff and yeah. problems like that. So just they, this it sucks. Bu this bureaucracy doesn't let us in. Yeah. Sucks. It sucks, but I, we will we will break it. Yeah, we will break I'm it. I'm sure we will. So, what are your plans for the rest of the 2017? Is it just touring, 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 or are you slowly collecting maybe ideas? For we you? have already started. Yeah. Yeah, we have several riffs now, several ideas, melodies, and uh, we are now trying to manage our work in process to be able to. Uh, compose something between tours and festivals uh, and uh, I believe uh, we will be touring uh, till the mid of autumn and after that we will devote ourselves completely to composing the new record which will be uh, out next year I think. Well I cannot wait for that. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank it was you really for your great tea. Pleasant to talk to. Okay, so Eugene, Metal Shop TV.